Namaste, beautiful soul. Welcome to Malaology. I am Teresa, here to help you choose your mala. So when you choose your mala, there's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration. The bead size and the bead count. And also, if you're going to have a tassel or a charm. So the anatomy of a mala is pretty simple. You have a larger bead, which is often called the miru bead or the guru bead, and a tassel. And then traditionally, 108 beads around. Now, sometimes you won't have a guru bead and tassel. You'll have a charm or a pendant instead. And sometimes it won't be 108 beads around. This is a quarter mala. This is 27 beads. Half mala is 54 and a three quarter mala is 81. The only ones you could wear around your neck would be the 81 and 108 bead malas. The others are too short. Um, some people ask, can I wear the 27 bead mala as a bracelet? And I mean, you could, but it would be very, very loose. I have rolled them up on my arm like this before, right? And on occasion, especially if it's beads that um, I don't consider sacred and it's a mala that I I've, you know, haven't really um, practiced mantra with, I'll use it as an anklet. So it is possible that you may be able to fit it on your forearm or on your ankle, okay? So um, size-wise, I just want to point out that I am wearing 6 millimeter beads and 8 millimeter beads. I want to show you the difference in how these two 6 millimeter beads hang. There is a difference, and there's always going to be a difference. With 6 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 10, 12, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be some variation in how your beads hang and what and the sizing only because these are organic substances that we uh, source all over the world and some of them are just made slightly larger than others some are rougher than others some are um, um, have teenier holes than others so they have to be used on thinner cord there's just many many variations in all beads so just expect that these aren't factory made by any stretch of the imagination um, I love wearing six millimeter malas around my neck. They're very comfortable and they don't get in the way when I'm working. They don't um, hang too far down and swing around and get in the dishwater or in my food or anything like that. And I love that. I love that I can go through the whole day and not even know that I'm wearing my mala. So most of the time I will wear a six millimeter mala around my neck. Um, the downside about six millimeter malas though is you can't generally wrap those around your wrist. If I tried to wrap this six millimeter sunstone mala around my wrist, see it's just a little bit too small. And I would have to stretch the mala and that would potentially end, it, end up breaking up. Now I do have one, I will say this, there is a caveat, I do have one six millimeter mala that somehow I can wrap around my wrist and that's my white topaz mala. So if you really, really want a six millimeter mala that you can wrap around your wrist, um, thus far, this is the only one that I'm able to wrap around my wrist and my wrist is 6.5 inches around. Um, actually, this one is more like 6.3 inches around, right? And I can wrap it very comfortably. Um, so that is six millimeter beads. And now we have eight millimeter beads to discuss. And again, I wanna point out that there is a difference and how these two malas hang, right? This is a sandalwood mala with moonstone, and this is a sandalwood mala with yellow opal. And the one with yellow opal hangs longer. And again, it's just because of the variation in bead size. These yellow opal beads are actually, some of them are actually nuggets. Again, they're organic materials, and they come in all different shapes and textures, okay? The beautiful thing about eight millimeter malas is they wrap very, very easily around the hand. So the way I wrap my mala is I just dangle it over my wrist like this, and one at a time, I bring it around my hand until the last one very carefully, and then just even it out like that. Um, if you plan on wearing your mala mostly around your wrist and not all the time around your neck, I recommend that you crop the tassel a little short. Okay, um, that way it'll keep the tassel from getting into your food and from getting dirty and, and matted. Um, I personally, whenever someone orders a mala from me, I include a little comb, a little tassel comb, 
for them to keep their melon neat. Not everybody does that. Inevitably, your tassel will get matted if you don't comb it regularly, and the longer ones get very, very matted, and it's hard to get them undone without actually like washing them. Yeah, and sometimes even using a little bit of conditioner. Um, another alternative is an 8mm 108 bead mala with a charm. That goes very, very well around the wrist, okay? Now, there are two sizes of 108 beads, an 81 um, bead mala and a 108 bead mala. I have an 81 bead mala right here, all right? This is an amethyst 81 bead mala, and it hangs very nicely right here at the heart chakra. This is where I like my Miru bead or Guru bead to lay. So you can see the difference between a 108 bead mala and an 81 bead mala. In the 81, or I'm sorry, the eight millimeter bead size, I, I prefer the 81 bead mala for daily use, but if I were taller, I am 5'7". My husband is 6'3", he prefers the 108 bead mala. Um, so it really depends on your height, your size, your comfort level, and what you're looking for, right? Your, 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 your lifestyle. So I'll show you the difference too in wrapping. This is a, a 108 bead mala wrapped around my wrist five times and an 81 bead mala wraps around my wrist four times. So there's the difference. The 108 wraps around five times, the 81 four times. Now again, my wrists are 6.3 inches and 6.5 inches, right? If your wrist were longer, or I'm sorry, larger, then you would have a hard time wrapping the 81 bead mala. Um, if I were a man in general, I will say that men's wrists are larger. I could only wrap um, a, a, a 108 bead mala around my wrist five times. My husband has a seven... I think it's a seven and a quarter inch wrist, seven and a, a seven and a quarter inch wrist. There are two, two different sizes. All our wrists are two different sizes. Um, he needs a 108 bead mala to wrap around his wrist. He can't quite do it with an 81 bead mala. So if you're a man or if you have a larger wrist and you want to wrap your mala, 108 beads in the 81 millimeter size is perfect. Um, so I do have add-on options in my shop, and that is the quarter mala that I showed you earlier and the wrist mala. This is an actual wrist mala, which has the guru bead or the miru bead. Usually it's still a little bit larger on the wrist malas with the little tassel and the beads. Now, a quarter mala has 27 beads. A wrist mala doesn't. A wrist mala is seven inches, unless you request it to be a different size feel free to request it to be a different size. I can make it smaller or larger. I think the seven um, inch size is fairly roomy and universal for everyone. It should be a little bit roomy unless you like your mala's tight. And um, it because it doesn't have 27 uh, beads, there is a trick to mala mantra. What you do is you count how many beads are on your mala. So say for instance, this mala has 20 beads right? So in order to do a quarter mala, a 27 mantras as a practice, just count back from the guru beads, seven beads, and don't count the little beads. They don't need to count. Um, seven beads, all right? And then do those seven mantras going toward the guru, and then turn it around and do the whole wrist mala. Then you'll know that you've done 27 repetitions. That's my little trick for that. Um, Another thing I will say is, if you like more lightweight malas, um, but you also like the substantial eight millimeter beads, which I truly do, I love eight millimeter beads, especially for mala mantra, then I recommend rudraksha, sandalwood, or other kind of wood or seed material. It's very, very lightweight. This is rudraksha material, and the beautiful thing about rudraksha is it darkens over time, and it becomes part of you and your energy and vice versa, it shares its energy with you. It's extremely powerful and filled with blessings. Um, your gemstone malas are also quite beautiful, um, and you could choose your mala according to your chakras if you have any kind of issues that you're working with. Um, I have articles and videos on the chakras. If you have any you know, questions about um, which chakra needs healing, just go ahead and check that out. But in short, I will say, 
your root chakra is blacks and browns and grays and sometimes reds and that is for security and for um feeling like you are connected to mother earth and getting your sustenance from mother earth and then oranges um, and sometimes red is your sacral chakra and that is being able to absorb that sustenance that you get from mother earth um, being able to practice self-care taking the time to um, be in your own skin in finding enjoyment there and then your solar plexus chakra these are golds and yellows very bright your solar plexus is solar it's your internal sun that's where you get your energy so if you're feeling low on energy or you're feeling unmotivated this is the chakra that you want to work on your heart chakra is is the great attractor so it attracts what you're manifesting it attracts love it attracts healing it radiates out too it's a transmitter it radiates out what it is that you desire so the universe can send it your way greens and pinks and then your throat chakra this is a really under this is something that most people have issues with um, is 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 blue so blue stones uh, inability to express yourself in a healthy manner inability to um, manifest out into the world what it is that you're envisioning inside or, or, or what it is that you're feeling that you want in your life and um, feeling like you have the um, feeling like you belong enough in this world and that you are acceptable enough in this world to put yourself out there right and then your your brow chakra is purple um, also indigo and this is your intuition and your ability to connect inwardly with the wisdom of the cosmos and then your crown chakra is whites and clears and that draws you closer to divinity and it opens you up to the guidance from the universe okay so a really practical way to be able to resonate all of these chakras in one is the Rudraksha. Rudraksha definitely resonates with all of your chakras, but also a chakra rainbow or a chakra patterned mala that has all of the colors in the rainbow from darks to lights. It's, 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 it's a great one. Also ombre, ombre malas. It doesn't have to be all the colors in the rainbow either. It can be black to white and many shades of gray as well. Um, it still has that kind of vibration of going from low low frequency to high frequency right and balancing your frequency um i will mention this too there are a couple of other intentions that i often get and um i just want to mention protection anybody who's looking for protect, pr pr protection black stones like um tourmaline and obsidian are amazing as again red, red raksha uh, and serenity and finding inner peace and stillness that is light blues and whites, okay? So um, ultimately though, you would look at the malas that are on offer and let the mala choose you because there is a mala that's looking for you. If you're watching this video, there's a mala that's looking for you. There's a mala that will speak to you when you see it and you'll know it, you'll feel it. You'll go away, you'll say, oh, that's nice, but I'm not so sure. And you know, kind of fl flit around Google or the internet looking for something else and you will remember that mala and you'll come back to it and you'll know that it's yours and that will be the mala for you the last thing i would recommend is consider your mala maker right i am a mala maker and i make my malas with love and um with with mantra being nodded into each bead with your intentions being nodded into each bead malas made especially and just for you and your intentions so that you know that this mala was crafted um, with the help of your God's guides and guards and love um, meant for you and your um, your beautiful journey here right so consider your mala maker when choosing your mala as well if you um, if you're not so sure that it's actually a human um, that's you know um, sending love and light send them a message and ask them a question and see what kind of vibration you get from their response. I don't recommend that you buy a mala from a kind of a factory that just puts malas out there because your mala is a magical device that is going to accompany you on your spiritual journey. And if it's made with intention and love, it's going to serve you so much more. It's like a meal that's made with love. It just tastes so much better, right? It'll also last a lot longer. It'll be much more high quality. The very last thing I will say is, 
Malaology is a vegan shop, so we don't use any shells, silk, coral, bones, um, anything of the sort. I don't think that it's a good idea to use anything like that, especially silk. Um, please research the cruel practice of sericulture and make your own mind up about that um, on a device that is so high vibration. All right. Thank you for joining me, love and light. Mala blessings.